My name is Matt Zeger, Vice President of the Forbes Funds. We are partnering with the Pittsburgh Foundation on, on this event in part because we do lots of educational sessions like this for nonprofits. Uh, we spent about the last 30 years really working on building capacity of organizations like yours in many different ways. And so that, that takes uh, sometimes really practical uh, ways like this. It takes sometimes grants that we give to organizations to build capacity in really strategic and specific ways. Uh, it also takes uh, really different strategies around executive coaching or support for your organizations in, in adult learning or education that, that is really kind of cohort based. So there's lots of different strategies we use as an organization to help you succeed. And, and in all of that work, uh, we've seen a lot of trends, right? There are many trends that are affecting the success of your organizations. And one of those trends that, that stands out to us that, that, I, that we're going to talk about today uh, is obviously the, the trend in the way donors engage in organizations and just generally the trend about and in philanthropy and in giving in, in, our, in our culture, in our community, in our region. Um, so when we think about uh, the day of giving, you know, as we as an organization that thinks about kind of capacity and strategy, just like the Pittsburgh Foundation over many organizations, we, we see this as an opportunity. So we're going to talk about opportunity today. Um, there's an opportunity to change the way we think about the day of giving from just really a, a transactional one organization trying to, to maximize a match to really a culture change, to something that we can do as a community in, in the power of the collective. You're going to hear that power of collective concept a lot talked about today by the team from the Pittsburgh Foundation. Um, but when we see uh, you know, when we see this trend of donor engagement, if you think about all the all the all the giving that takes place in the country, about 77 percent, close to 80 percent of all giving in the country takes place by individuals. It's a very personal thing, right? It's not an institutional practice. We as a culture are a culture. Uh, folks that we like to give, we like to care about things and, and really put our money and our time into, uh, into causes that we care about. So as we think about our, our, our region and how we approach these days, there's an opportunity to really harness this day, this 24 hours, this bit of time, to really maximize the impact not only for you in this really transactional way, but really as a, both a culture change, but also as a capacity development. Change. So I'm going to put my capacity development hat on. When, when we think about how you fundraise, when we work with organizations and we do uh, trainings for about 3,000 organizations, 3,000 people per year, and about a couple hundred organizations in Pittsburgh per year. When we think about how your organizations attack fundraising, think about donor engagement, think about development. We know you're all struggling with bringing in new donors, taking new donors from those early levels and bringing them through into really sustaining members that care, that are deeply committed, that become board members, that become advocates and evangelists for your cause. We know that you're all thinking about that. And we think that there's an opportunity to use this day as not only just this kind of big marketing conversation around philanthropy and a culture of giving, but really strategically for your organization to reframe your cause, to reframe the way you bring in new people. So you all have all of those peripheral interested parties that sign up for your emails but never give you a dime, right? You all have all those folks that come to volunteer days uh, and then never sign a check to you or never swipe that credit card. You have all these folks that are kind of within your universe that really care. You know they care. We know they care. Uh, but there's really kind of often a really big barrier, I think, to getting them into the organization. So we're going to talk about opportunity today. We're going to talk about collective. And so I want to, I know this changes in this, in this process. And I want you to kind of take that hat off of being concerned about changes, because change is hard for every organization. But I want you to think about opportunity. So, so push back, ask questions about the opportunity here. Think about how you can partner, think about how you can use this day in both those two ways, both to really think about your development capacity and also think about culture change as the collective, as the region. So we're going to go over three things. We're going to go over really in the details about the overview of what's changed in the day of giving. Um, so really specific stuff, practical stuff. We're going to talk about uh, really how to maximize uh, match pools. We're going to talk about how to maximize incentives because there's going to be some really cool incentives I think you've seen. This. There's ways to really strategically use communications around it. Now we're going to talk third about communications, and specifically around social media, and around how do we how do we bring new people into the fold? How do we use this as an opportunity to tell our story in a way that is empowering, engaging, and drives uh, new donors into your organization and, and, and maybe consistent donors up to new levels of giving? So uh, that's that. Uh, take us up on this. We really do care about your organization finding value in this process, and we, and we really do care about your organization having the capacity to execute on this well. So both as the Forbes Funds and the Pittsburgh Foundation, uh, we are doing this for you. We are doing this to support your organization to be successful. So help us know how to do it better. Um, if, if as you leave this day, you feel like you didn't hear something that you needed to hear, if you feel like you're just not sure what to do, um, all of us are at the beck and call to help you and your organization be successful in this process. Uh, a lot of interest in this day, obviously. 
and for a really good reason. We want to help you be able to maximize it because you're ultimately what makes this day successful. It's not us. Um, so thank you for your time. I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Uranker, who's going to lead it from there. So uh, this year will be an interesting year. We are changing the model uh, for our day of giving, as you know. Uh, we started day of giving about six years ago in response to the market forces around 2008. And the idea that we wanted to drive up individual giving in this community, give the, the local nonprofits a boost in a bad economic time, and also try to increase the capacity around online giving. So back then, there were not a lot of opportunities for online giving in 2009. There were team and training type models. There might have been some match opportunities. <coughs> But here we are in 2016, and the field is completely different. There are for-profits out there now who are marketing to you all directly to have your own matches, your own Kickstarters, your own campaigns online. Uh, we are not the only game in town anymore. So you may be in the room thinking, why should we participate this year? And you'll hear this phrase again and again, it's the power of the collective. What the foundation would like to do is make this model sustainable and offer you a tool which you can choose to use in your fundraising campaigns. In order to make it sustainable, though, we had to look at the model. There are several community foundations across the country of our size who do these types of days of giving, and we're all reaching the same point. We're in four, five, six years, and we're seeing the donations flatline. We're also seeing the match pools go down because every year we have 30 to 40 new nonprofits, mainly small to mid-size, who are brand new and who want to participate, which is great. But the larger the pool, and the match goes down. And what we've heard from our surveys out to the public are of a variety of things. They like the day of giving concept. A match does matter. Does the match size matter that much? No, it's the idea that there's a little something extra. So we are changing our model this year in that the Pittsburgh Foundation is not offering a match pool. Um, what we are offering is the tool and the platform and the power of the collective marketing to try to shift our community to a day of giving versus a match day. So in other communities across the country that have done this and other foundations who have either started out with no match or have shifted to no match from the foundation, it becomes much more of a community giving day. There are more public events, there's more publicity. Uh, it's uh, similar to, let's say, the United Way's Day of Karen, right? It's a day where everybody volunteers. So we're trying to shift this to a day when everybody gives. Uh, we're shifting it to May. The last one was in May as well. So it's away from the year-end campaigns. So it may be, may be an opportunity for a second gift into your organization to regain lapsed donors with a little bit of a spur, with a little bit of a match, or to gain new donors. This is our test year. We're going to see how this goes. We're going to analyze it afterwards and then decide whether we're going to continue it on into 2017. Uh, how the match works is if you decide, you can participate with a match or without a match. If you decide to raise that match money, you have to secure that gift or gifts by April 3rd, which is a month away. So what you may want to do, and Nate Hansen will go into this in more depth, is look at your board or your larger donors and where you may have had that donor give to your match day in the prior year, you're going to ask them, or perhaps you're going to ask them to secure the gift for the match. It does not have to be a large match. We were talking amongst ourselves and thought maybe the, at base a $500 match might be appealing up to whatever you decide to put on your profile. No money changes hands, so you are not sending match money over here. What you're basically saying, and we handed out a letter that's an example, is you're saying we've secured X amount of dollars from the following people for our match. We will take that number and put it on your profile, and that's the number that will display on the day of giving. As people contribute that day to the public, that match will spin down, or it was suggested to us in the private previous session, we're going to spin it up so that that match is fulfilled. What our experience has been with other uh, initiatives that we've done is that when the match is done, people continue to give, and that's what we want to happen. We want it to be a day of giving. So if you have a match on your, on your profile and then the match is fulfilled, people are likely, because it's the perception and that it's a day of giving, to continue to give to you. What we will send you uh, from that day is one check within 60 business days that represents the contributions from the public, net of 5.99%.
that 5.99% is the 3% credit card fee, and the two and some change that pays for this technology. The Pittsburgh Foundation doesn't have any fees associated with us. Uh, we'll provide the platform and the customer service and the media and the marketing free of charge. Uh, so that is how the match works. We've had quite a few questions about securing the match or can you use funds that are already secured. If they've been secured recently, uh, so say in calendar year 2016, you had a large donor give you a $5,000 gift, a $1,000 gift, or a $500 gift. As long as you go to that person and tell them and secure their permission to use it for your match, you can use it for your match. We want to be transparent as possible on that side. So uh, someone referenced a corporate sponsorship that they recently secured for an event. If you've secured that sponsorship, as long as you go back to the, the, the corporation and ask if you can use that for your match pool and they agree, you can use that for your match pool. Because uh, we are aware of the time limitations on April 3rd. So what you do need to have done by April 3rd is a letter into us telling us what your match is if you want to use a match on that day. Your profile updated. Uh, which is um, in the new system fairly uh, easy, and Nate will talk about that as well. And then we go from there. After April 3rd, there's about a week to make changes to the portrait, if you like, and then we are locked in. This May 3rd date is a national date. It's called Give Local America. There are over 300 community foundations across the country running similar events. It is all the same technology vendor. So they are locking down the dates a little tighter this year. So after, let's say, April 10th, you won't be able to make any changes publicly to your portrait. The site itself on that day, you'll be able to go to your portrait and see your number of donations and the amount. There is a leaderboard which will announce every organization and their participation and what they're making. So you can check at any time how you're doing. Uh, my name is Nate Hansen. I am the Center for Philanthropy Fellow here at the Foundation. Um, I report to Kelly and I'm the project manager for Day of Giving. Um, I've been with the foundation for about a month and a half. Prior to that, I was the chief staff for City Councilwoman Deb Gross. I was also Patrick Gallup's communications manager before that uh, when he was in City Council. So I'm excited to be here uh, and able to help uh, nonprofits navigate the Day of Giving process um, and work with any logistical concerns that you have or questions about profiles, things like that. Um, and Frankly, let's just step back and see and remind ourselves that it's a beautiful day to be doing good work and to be alive and to be thinking about how we're going to raise money to continue that work. So, um, Chris, could you go over to the other screen? Thanks. So this is what uh, our uh, 2016 um, Day of Giving registration page will look like for um, your organizations. Um, this page and the Day of Giving site itself for 2016 will be launched sometime next week. Um, you'll be getting an email to confirm when it has been announced and when it's up and running. Um, but this is really what it will look like for your purposes. If you're already registered, if you participate in past years, uh, your profile will carry over to the 2016 Day of Giving and Pittsburgh Give site. Um, it's linked to your GuideStar pages, right? So in terms of financial information, things like that, um, you want to make sure that things are current in GuideStar. Um, and then also you want to make adjustments to board members and other things that might have changed, like staffing. Um, but uh, you'll see here um, Chris Pope, who's in the back. Um, his, his email address is right here listed. Chris is going to help uh, with day-to-day -day concerns. And then you can also email me as well with those. Uh, my email address, it's not up on the website yet, but it's Hanson, like the band, H-A-N-S-O-N, uh, N for my first name, at pghfdn.org. So um, email me with anything that you'd like, and I can always help you out. So we're going to go into a slideshow and briefly talk about um, strategies for match pools, and then also look at some statistics about day of giving uh, to put things in perspective. Uh, I've made this joke a number of times in other sessions, and I'm going to do it again because you only live once. Uh, and I'm new to the foundation. I'm not sick of dog puns, so we have a new dog, which requires new strategies, parenthetically tricks. Um, so uh, really, the intent from the foundation is that um, we want day of giving to increase individual giving in our region. Um, these are, this is giving among people who might not be traditionally engaged with the nonprofit sector or supporting the nonprofit sector. These aren't people who are going to be on your board. These aren't people of means who um, take it uh, to give as a, uh, a reason that um, that's their way of civic engagement. Um, really, we're looking at uh, helping organizations target 
new donors or lapsed donors, right? So this is the person that might have come to an event uh, and bought a ticket uh, one time and given some money uh, through that event, but maybe hasn't interacted with uh, an organization uh, in any way uh, after that event, right? So you have their information, maybe they're on your email list, maybe they need that extra nudge to give and to be engaged, and then to bring them in really through Day of Giving, teach them more about your mission, bring them in in a way that they can continue to support and perhaps grow into a higher level donor in the future. Um, really this is about strengthening the field's uh, capacity to fundraise um, through online tools, through social media, and really provide a catalyst for donors to visit the site. The, by and large, the biggest um, thing behind Day of Giving is the fact that you, know, you eat turkey on Thanksgiving because it's Thanksgiving, you give on Day of Giving because it's the Day of Giving, right? It's, it's, a, it's a medium, it's an event, and it's something that uh, people who don't think about donating to nonprofits 99% of the time uh, take very seriously as that push to give. And it's a reason that uh, we've had success in past years. It's the reason that um, regardless of match pool um, for you know, our critical needs uh, fundraising campaign, that donations exceeded the match amount that the foundation put up by over a million dollars. It's an event, it's a reason, and it's a collective power uh, to change things and to really improve the region that's taken seriously by all people, right? So we want to continue to expand that through the new model. Uh, really, uh, what we want to make sure, however, is that our smaller organizations that participate in Day of Giving, um, which we have an increase in every year, uh, aren't uh, negatively affected by the change in the model, right? So we've created the tiered incentive packages that you have in your packets to include um, and provide support for particularly those organizations with operating budgets under $250,000, right? Um, many of uh, you have contacted either Chris or I uh, with questions logistically about your profiles. Um, we find that those organizations are the organizations that we want to help um, make sure that they have the necessary support to participate in Day of Giving, and then also to leverage that and to build capacity moving forward to then improve their overall organizational function. So, uh, okay, yeah. uh, so you'll see like the new incentives are in your package. This is a, a brief rundown, um, and really, uh, we'll get into breakfast, lunch, and dinner prizes later into the presentation. But uh, those hours particularly are times when we want to drive traffic, we want to create excitement, and we really want to see a, a be tangible benefit for smaller organizations and all organizations um, to be able to benefit from the, the incentive pool that the foundation has put up. I realize that it, this change can be overwhelming. We're talking through a lot of um, the timeline um, tightness and then also uh, the change in the model. So the biggest thing to remember is to not worry. Uh, in fact, mobilize, right? So the key to successfully leveraging the new model and creating opportunities is really, particularly for the small organizations, uh, to leverage your board and also the greater community that you serve. And really connecting those two components of your network is the most important thing um, for following through with data giving in a successful way for your organization. So here we have a graph um, which outlines the increase in the number of organizations who have participated in data giving um, since 2009. You'll see a steady increase. And really that is because we get 30 to 40 uh, small organizations participating each year, which is great because we want to create uh, a day where everyone who wants to participate can participate and benefit from um, that collective power. Um, but we also want to take that into account when we're looking at the new model. So we're going to go into the next slide and talk about specifically your board. Your board is one of your most powerful assets as an organization. Uh, technically, they are the financial stewards of your organization. These are the people who um, outside of your staff, care the most about your mission and need to be engaged and have the ability to be engaged, right? So uh, we all know that it's best practice to have 100% giving rates among board members, um, but we also know that particularly among smaller organizations that that doesn't uh, necessarily always happen, right? So um, what the day of giving we're hoping to do is particularly among smaller organizations uh, incentivize and allow for an opportunity for you as staff members of organizations to really go to your board and provide an opportunity to allow for 100% giving, right? And this goes beyond uh, just the day of giving. This allows for you to check that box off when you, when you submit a grant application to the foundation um, for funding, right? Because that's a key metric that foundations look at that we take seriously. We want to help you guys 
or anybody who's not at that level gets that level, right? Um, but what's the best place to start, right? Um, generally speaking, uh, these folks might not have a lot of money, but they still have some money that they want to commit to your organization or they should in theory, right? I'm on the board of the Union Project. They're not going to name the Union Project after, after me because of a gift that I've given, but uh, the reality is that I want to give to the Union Project because I care about the mission and I care about what our staff does and I want to support it, right? Our minimum contribution for day of giving is $25. It's a really easy threshold to go to a board member that might not be engaged or might not have had the opportunity to give and say, hey, can you give me a one-time gift of $25? It helps to go to our match pool. It leverages additional funds from folks who might be from the broader network that we haven't really tapped into from a donor perspective. So here we see the average gift given per donor among all counties that um, day of giving uh, is implemented in. So that's Butler County, Allegheny County, Westmoreland County. And you see... Up here, particularly the first year with uh, the foundation match pool, you have a large uh, average gift, and that's oftentimes made by board members or folks who have been lined up to give to receive the match. And then you see a pretty steady decrease over time to um, the $355 in 2014, which was the average gift given per donor, which is an important thing to remember, right? Uh, this means that there's an increase in small donations, and this is a trend that we're seeing nationwide with things like Kickstarter, crowdfunding campaigns, right? Um, and really, it's frankly a product of that you have a millennial generation that uh, values social impact, values being able to give in a strategic way and feel like they're making a difference in their community, but doesn't necessarily have the financial means to make a gift that would be on par with, say, a more traditional donor to an organization. Uh, and really what is important is to harness that trend and to make sure that it, you can create a relationship with those types of donors that then grows into a higher level donation relationship in the future, maybe one or two career moves away. So really, the community is the other aspect of strategies for how to implement data giving in a strategic way under the new model, right? So we want to create a donor community, we want to create a community of giving within the region, and uh, this, we're hoping, can be done through strategic partnerships among organizations, right? Everybody is in this room, both to learn about Day of Giving, but then we're, it is our hope, right, to hear feedback from all of you about Day of Giving, help to work through the process as we change the model, but then also to connect each one of you to one another, right? Knowing your peers, knowing how to collaborate, knowing how to work together to raise money is a really important and innovative tool that is going to be very useful uh, as we see the, the trends in philanthropy and giving uh, develop over time within uh, both the region and then nationwide. Um, strategic partnerships are, are a key to uh, opportunities here, right? So, um, for instance, if an organization, um, if one of your organizations is looking at how to partner or promote day of giving on the day itself, uh, perhaps partnering with a restaurant in your neighborhood or uh, another coffee shop within your neighborhood to host a day of giving donation center, right? bringing people in, the restaurant helps to cross-promote on their social media, you guys cross-promote on your social media, and then it develops a, not only a day of giving relationship, but a community relationship, which is what we're looking at, right? Overall community impact, changing a culture. And again, the power of the collective, which I feel like uh, we made a joke that every time I say that, you should just drink a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> so, some example strategies, right? Um, to think about, and this is just to get wheels turning, um, and then we would also, there's going to be a portion later where we want to sort of hear and we can um, take feedback from you guys or, or brainstorm about other strategies. But you need to raise a match pool. Let's be honest, we have a month, right, until that match pool is due in hand, and we recognize that that is a tight timeline. Um, but for those of you that have upcoming events, um, maybe you contribute. $10 uh, from that event to your match pool, you tell the donor that that's what's going to happen, that, that, that helps to create a match pool that you guys can utilize. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be a big match pool, it's about the perception of the match, which is really what's going to drive folks from the outside. Um, so, uh, or conversely, if you have an event coming up that you're looking for creative ways to leverage that money, you can take all of the funds that are raised from that event and then put it in your match pool as well. That's, a, that's an opportunity there that is, that is welcome. Uh, and also, frankly, you guys know your donors better than we do, right? You have data on who gives you money. You know who can give a high dollar amount. 
you know, who gives regularly, who you might be able to engage. And what we're trying to do, and what we're hoping um, organizations take away is the fact that this is a really great opportunity to approach those donors, right, and say, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. This is how your money is really going to be useful to us on this day. Would you mind giving and, and helping us to create a match pool? Um, creates impact, creates a reason for a phone call, creates a reason for correspondence, and the sense of urgency there, too, uh, should help to spur, spur along an additional gift. You'll see here the total number of individual donations uh, among all kinds. And keep in the back of your mind the other graphs that we showed. Uh, we see a sharp decrease in 2014, right? Which means that, and this is something that um, has happened across the country, the other community foundations that facilitate Days of Giving have experienced where when Day of Giving first is launched, right, whether it's magical, people are excited, it's new, it's shiny, it's fun, and then people in the public are very, very interested. And as over time, you'll see that the only, the, most of the people that remain interested are the folks that are going to be interested from a board perspective or from a high donor perspective. And we want to push back and create that individual, not necessarily regular donor engagement and provide an opportunity for that. So, so let me ask you one more question. Do you need a match to participate this year? No. Thank you. You are absolutely right. We got it. There are two games. And I will call this a game. Uh, online fundraising uh, is, has a gaming element to it. There are two games this year. There is the normal match, which almost runs similar to the way that we have you know, run Day of Giving in the past. Um, but you own the match this year, which makes things very interesting. So you have control this year. And the second game is the prizes, right? So there are some prizes. And we're going to talk about both of these as we talk uh, about marketing and your marketing kits I'm working on. It's a little bit of a challenge this year. It's a challenge because you need to customize your messages depending on what strategy that you're going to use this year for day of giving. And so, you know, before it's been let's go out and let's, let's get as many people as possible, but that may not be how you want to do it this year. You may use day of giving to reach a specific audience, a specific set of donors, a specific market. Um, it, it may not be your big fundraising event this year as it has been in past years possibly. So, uh, but your marketing kits are available. They're going to be a little bit generic this year probably. I'm going to try as best as I can, uh, but you're going to need to customize them based on however you choose. They are available on the Pittsburgh Foundation site, not the Pittsburgh gift site. The Pittsburgh Foundation site gives us a little bit more flexibility on how we deliver files to you. So it's available at pittsburghfoundation.org backslash media underscore PGH gifts. You'll get an email when it's available, and I promise it's soon. Um, I have them in my email. I just, I've been here with you guys all morning. I haven't had a chance to look at it. So um, <clears throat> that kit will go out. Uh, as in previous years, I can't be everything to everyone with that kit, but I want to be as responsible as possible in helping you market. So if there's something that's missing, uh, if you can tell me as early as possible, I can possibly develop some graphics for you for your needs. Um, now we can flip ahead. So I'm going to go over three things for social media. Three reminders today. Real simple. The first one is totem voice. So nonprofits, they tend to talk from an organizational standpoint. It's very authoritarian. It sounds like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Remember on social media, you are talking to a person, not a computer, a person. And the first word in social media is social. <laughs> Social. So, as you're putting together your messages, think about how you want to communicate to the person next to you, not necessarily the person across the country sitting behind a computer that you're actually reaching. Okay? Second one. So, we want to show impact. This is all about giving. And giving today is the impact and experience for a donor, right? So, the first thing uh, is, is stories are remembered better than data. So you want to think about the stories that you have to tell. You want to tell good stories. The second thing is, is you want to show impact for these donors, particularly the millennials. They want to know how they're making an impact with that small donation. That drives them. That motivates them. So what does $25 do for your organization? Particularly, how does $25 fit into that story that you're telling? Or 50 or 100 whatever makes the most sense for your organization. 
The third one, and I hate to do this because this is a very, uh, this is a heart-wrenching photo for me, and I hate putting up this photo, but I have to do it. One story. One story. Before this story, uh, if you track the media mentions and the donations for the Syrian refugee cause, they were flat. After this story hit, they spiked. Uh, it went across the country, around the world. The day after this young man uh, drowned, 14 additional children drowned the very next day. It was not a big, as big of a story as that one. So there's a couple lessons in there. One, one story can make a difference, can make a huge impact on your organization. The second thing is, is studies have shown that people can uh, produce empathy towards one person rather than a large number of person, people. So when you're looking at a crisis situation, 100 means less to a person than one. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to show you two very serious examples, but data giving can be fun. And so whatever tone you're taking, just you know, keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't have to be serious necessarily to raise money. But that one story makes a difference. The last thing I want to leave you with is we're very visual these days, so we want you to produce visual type of content uh, when you're out there promoting day of giving. This is a local photographer, and this is a picture that right away I get this story from. This is somebody's kitchen underneath a bridge, and I understand why a gift to a homeless organization is important. Off of that one, though. Those are the only three things, only three tips for you today on social media. You can do those three things, you'll have a successful day. So lastly, let's talk about this new game. So if you've got a board member or a donor that is going to give you money for the match, and it's okay to promote them, then customize your messages and go ahead. Because I heard it when I asked what the first, first uh, word in social media was. Well, I use it as the second. What are the first two letters of the, of the second word? Social media is all about me, not you. It's all about the individual. And you saw that with the, uh, the ice bucket challenge, right? A lot of donations made because I got to show off. I got to have my time. I got to have my 15 minutes with that. So if you're able to customize your message, you can, one, um, really give that donor some extra publicity for what they've done for your organization and what, uh, and what that money means um, and what it's going to generate. And two, you can, since they have skin in the game, if they're willing to work for you, by customizing that message, they can then work out to their networks to get the, the donations that, that they're matching. The second thing is, is that you're, wanting, you're gonna wanna, if you're gonna play for a prize, you're gonna wanna customize your messages to fit that particular prize that you're going after this year as well. So, the third point is, you don't need to go after all of them. Um, in fact, if you go after all of them, you're probably, you know, dividing your time too much, right? So pick one or two, three prizes that you think you might have an opportunity to do and focus on those um, and focus your messaging on those. And even if you didn't win, that kind of excitement is what works in social media. That kind of game works very well. So you'll generate a lot of donations even if you didn't take, take the top prize during those periods of time. You want to work to build your following now. So you want to start to tell your stories now. But please don't ask for day of giving money yet. Uh, wait till we're closer for that. Um, build up your credibility and then ask when it's time to ask. Um, that could be the week before, the day before, the day of. Uh, don't forget the day of. Running your campaigns the day of. In the moment creates a lot of donations for day of giving. Uh, lastly, you have an opportunity to... Um, Thank your, your donors in real time. If we're able to give you those donors, which I hope, hope we can make happen, um, you'll really be able to do it. But in the meantime, if you're following your social media, you'll notice that people say, I just gave to so-and-so. And that -so. and gives you a great opportunity to thank them in real time. So please do that. Um, that creates more activity, more conversation going on for your organization. Um, and it gives them validation right away. Um, it also gives you a chance for a social media post. Uh, lastly, uh, you've heard it, the collective, the collective. I'm going to tell you, partner, 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 partner. Um, you're not in competition <laughs> as much as you think you are with this. Uh, donors give to, on average, three organizations on that day. Um, 
if you can get together, you can really drive these prizes. So if you could partner up with the organizations and say, I'll help you go after this prize, if you help me go after that prize, you've now got two networks against somebody's one. So find, find ways to partner within yourself. But don't stop there. You can partner with corporations. You can partner with church groups. You can partner with uh, other, or, you know, other organizations, fraternal organizations. Whoever can give you help to spread the word is a great partner. Um, and if you involve them in that, then they get you know, fringe benefits off of that as well because they're being mentioned in, in a very large event. So don't be afraid to partner. 